Hi, in this video we will be looking into the concepts of decoupler and some idealistic methods for designing the decoupler. Let's start seeing the what is the what is this decoupler and why do we need it. In the previous video we looked into decoupling the system for MVC for multivariable CISO method. Uh, especially when we are looking into multiple inputs and multiple outputs, we looked into decoupling the system by pairing the input and output, which particular input is affecting a which particular output and can we then consider them under the uh, under considering multiple single input single output systems so that we can have a very structured um, individual control loops sitting in for individual uh, CISO subsystems. In this video, we will first introduce what are right hand side uh, right hand side transmission zeros and then look forward for decoupling kind of a controller, uh, specifically the feed forward way and next we will look into the feedback way as well. Let us see what are these zeros. The zeros for a single input single output system limits the performance because especially when it is on the right hand side, it gives you a non minimum phase kind of a uh, kind of a, a response. For example, there is a 0 on the right hand side and it is a first order system. Then for a step input, initially your output is going to go in an opposite direction as in input was actually given on the uh, input is given in the positive direction but the, uh, but the output is going opposite and then it picks up and settles down. So, this particular non minimum phase kind of a characteristics, it not only adds the delay into the system, but at the same time since it is a reverse action happening um, while even going for the uh, while even going into the uh, higher side, it first goes into the lower side and then tries to settle it down. So, to, to certain extent this is undesirable because such kind of a characteristics can appear even for the disturbances as well and the rejection disturbance rejection further gets delayed in some sense. So, the transfer function for the for, ex, for the uh, sing, single input single output system if it is of the N of S and D of S side and we have been looking into certain techniques at times when we have to consider uh, model based methods to be considered we need inverse of these transfer functions. So, further these zeros appear in the uh, as a poles in the in, in case we want to design it based on the inverse of the transfer function. So, these RHP zeros are, are, are again an issue when we, one has to design the controller based on the inverse of the transfer function. It results if it is an model inverse method then it will certainly going to re result in unstable controllers. So, we know when we have to consider the inverse model what we consider we factor out these RHP 0 and the portion of the model which does not have the uh, RHP 0 is used for the inverse methods and so on inverting the model uh, concept. In case of the multivariable transmission multivariable systems or the MIMO system other than the uh, other than the zeros of individual transfer functions there are transmission zeros as well. Let us see what these transmission zeros are. These transmission zeros are, dif are, are, the, are, are at the value of s for which the transfer function matrix loses rank. So, the value of s for which the determinant of g of s is equal to 0 where g of s is a transfer matrix form. So, this particular one then becomes the pole for the inverse system, additional pole for the inverse system and that is where we, we should be worried about these transmission zeros as well. For example, if this particular uh, transfer function g of s has g of s has s plus 3, uh, 2, 3, 1 whereas the all the poles of all the 4 transfer functions of the system. Uh, by the way this is 2 input 2 output system and that is why the g of s turns out to be of 2 cross 2 matrix form. But the first uh, first subsystem first uh, transfer function which is between input u1 and output y1 
it is having a 0 at s is equal to minus 3 which is on the left hand side fair enough. But when we try to get the determinant of g of s what we get here is s plus 3 minus 6 equals 0 when we sub when we consider this kind of uh, finding out where the transmission 0 is we find the determinant of g of s which is equal to s plus 3 minus 6 we, we am doing nothing but the cross multiplication over here and then subtracting it and I, when I substitute it is 0 we get s minus 3 equals 0 or s is equal to 3 means this is this is what the 0 or a transmission 0 which is on the right hand side. So, we can see that the transfer function in itself was not having a 0 to the right hand side 0, but the transmission 0 which is resulting from getting the determinant of g of s is having a right hand side 0 um, which is going to create issues when um, there is a when we are designing the system with the uh, with the inverse which involves inverting the model. So we have um, as we said there was uh, there, there is a 0 of g11 which is at s equal to minus 3 but the matrix transmission 0 is at s equal to 3 which we should be bothered about which was not visible clearly but now when we took the determinant of g of s now we know that this particular system has a transmission 0 at s is equal to 3. All right. Now let us see what we are talking about a decoupler in this case and why should we be worried about the transmission zeros in such cases. Um, let us consider this kind of a multivariable control system where we have a planned transfer function given by GP, the controller transfer function is GC of S. Uh, since this is multivariable, uh, multivariable transfer functions. Uh, we can consider that each of this GP and GC is nothing but matrix transfer functions. So, if it is a CISO controller means multivariable MV CISO kind of a method, then the controller is nothing but a is, is nothing but a diagonal matrix. So, in that case your y of s y of s can be easily written in terms of g d of s u of s g d of s g p of s u of s plus g d of s d of s. As of now we are not considering this diagonal part when, when I said GP of S but at the same time one can see that the controller design becomes very easy when we are considering the MVC so method because then we have independent controllers to be um, designed and, and, and which are not interacting with each other all right. Uh, at the same time all the interactive terms can be considered plugged into uh, saying that okay there is a small disturbance and so we should be worried about rather rather uh, rather uh, doing the disturbance rejection in this case and those interactive terms to certain extent is reflected in this gd form uh, it's a simple same ciso way of anal analyzing and finding the transfer function uh, the overall transfer function of the system of this particular controller block we can say E of s is equal to Y of s times R of s which is my um, uh, error function over here Y minus R sorry this is this is minus part over here Y minus R. So, we can write similar way the way we substitute Y of s is equal to all, all these um, Y in terms of uh, U and R in terms of U sorry uh, when, when we just simply write in terms of uh, uh, the signal flow, flow flow type we can say this is turning out to be similar as the CISO system form. So, we get 1 in the CISO form we say 1 plus g h where this was h and this is g and it gives you y of s equals g h r of s plus g d d of s. So, this so that therefore the control transfer function control systems transfer function becomes g h by 1 plus g h it is counterpart in terms of the in terms of the matrix transfer functions are being considered in this form now all right. Now, we have we have instead of 1 for the uh, matrix form 1 becomes your identity matrix and when we are dealing with matri matrices 
we have to be very careful especially when it is an inverse form coming up. This in the case of CISO part it was simple division by 1 plus GH, here it becomes 1 I plus GP GC inverse GP of S GC of S. Similarly over here this is going to be left multiplied first uh, that also we have to be very careful about that this inverse which is coming from the left hand side over here is now left multiplied with the uh, rest of the terms over here. We also know in the matrices form we have to be very careful that GP GC is not equal to GC GP. So when we are multiplying, when we are seeing the signal flows, which particular matrix, transfer matrix, transfer function matrix comes first is very important. So we, here we have to make sure that we are making uh, uh, no mistake in terms of reversing it in, in case uh, in case it's specifically when it is uh, uh, not a square matrix, then multiplication anyway has to respect the matrix loss. All right. So for the decoupling decoupling controller, now what we have here is that one method which was pairing the variables. Now for example, those pairing variables are not pos not coming out possible. Then what is the possibility that can I convert the, can I have one more system, one more, uh, one more block which is like a transformation which is giving me a pairing form. So that is what the decoupler that we are, that is what the block is called as a decoupler and will help us in uh, using the MVC so methods later. So what we have is an interaction which is uh, resulting in a manipulated input affecting more than one controlled outputs. If that is what is the case, then we have decoupler which will have this D block sitting here and which, uh, uh, which, which is nothing but transforming which is giving U star and Y such that it affects only one process variable now. So this synthetic input variable or manipulated input we need to figure out what it is first of all but at the same time this synthetic manipulated input is chosen such that there is an pair wise now, now I am able to do the pairing. So U1 star is say, say uh, affecting most the Y1, U2 star is affecting Y2 and so on and so forth which was not happening if it was uh, uh, the true manipulated input over here. So here comes the design for the decoupler which is again once we see it um, we should be appreciate we should be able to appreciate that it is it is a very straightforward design but there are there are many more other things that we can consider while designing it to make it a simplified D, uh, D block or a decoupler block that is appearing here. All right. So now uh, in a general way we have a process which has which is comprising of four transfer functions G11, G21, G12 and G22. So a transfer function form this is G11, G12, G21 and G21 is what we are talking about. So G21 for example is a transfer function between Y2 and U1, Y2 and U1. All right. Now these are uh, these uh, manipulated inputs U1 and U2, we figured out that they are not uh, able to pair it well with any Y1 and Y2, uh, single Y1 or Y2. So in a, in a way when I am changing U1, Y1 and Y2 both are changing. Similarly, there is a possibility that U2 is also affecting both Y1 and Y2. Now I want to design a decoupler over here. So this de decoupler, uh, this particular decoupler is again of the form of D11, D12, D21 and D21, D11, D2, D21, D12 and D22. So my decoupler block is again D11, D12, D21 and D22 but now it is between U1 and U star. So instead of the output Y1, now my output is U1 over here and this is a synthetic U1 star that we, that we get it. The overall we would like U1 star to affect only Y1, U2 star to affect only Y2. So can I come up with this particular decoupler D such that 
I have a pairing option available and that is what um, we would like to take it up. Since this is two input to output system, it is easier to visualize. This is any for, for any multi input multi output system, the decoupler design is a wonderful piece, a wonderful way of uh, coming up with MVC so methods and we should be able to uh, we should be able to design multiple CISO control systems. All right. Now let's see what is the decoupler design turning out to be. Now I have y1, y2. Since this was, uh, since we can see that now decoupler is sitting before the uh, process block, so it is in the feed forward way, and this particular method is my feed forward way of the decoupler design. Now y1, y2 output is nothing but gp of s uh, earlier it was like gp of s u of s u1 of s and u2 of s all right now this u1 and u2 is being coming from the u1 star and u2 star um, so uh, and and passing by the decoupler block d of s so we have multiple possible choices for GP of S and D of S because I can I can have many ways by which I would be able to consider connecting U1 star with U1 by one directly. So there are two choices one is ideal decoupling and another is simplified decoupling. Let us look into the ideal decoupling first. Now under the ideal decoupler what we want finally is a GP of S, GT of S should result me a diagonal matrix form now. So that my y1 and y2 are related to u1 star and u2 star in a one on one basis. For example, so basically I want this to be g11, g1, g22 and these two elements as 0. So then I would be able to write y1 is equal to g11 u1 star and y2 equals g22 u2 star. All right. Okay, so now if that is the case, then it, it becomes, uh, I mean, we have many, many choices for G11 and G22. So we can result in not a unique design of a decoupler even in the ideal coupler itself, but we can always uh, think about governing the way uh, what is possible and what is not possible. Um, finally, we will have, we'll have to deal with G11 and G22 and the controller designs will be for G11 and G22. All right. So now my decoupler is nothing but D of S is equal to GPS of inverse G11 and G2. Now you notice this inverse, this inverse should not have, so GP of S is not having the RHP zeros or the transmission zeros, then this is invert, this particular invert, invertible um, transfer matrix can be used for designing the decoupler. All right. As I mentioned, this is going to give me a diagonal form and, and in the form of y1 is equal to g11 u1 star and y2 is equal to g22 u2 star. What are the advantages and the limitations of this ideal decoupler? We can, we will have independent CSO tuning parameters that can be used for each control loop. At the same time, we have the, um, uh, we have the flexibility of designing what should be G11 and what should be G22 here. But what is the limitation? We just spoke about if the transfer function has transmission zeros, then what to do, all right? So there are hacks available similar to the, the uh, inverse model methods that we had. We can keep the transmission zeros part separately. We could, uh, we could, we could design it for the transmission zeros separately. The, the main thing is, main limitation is that it is sensitive to the model errors because we are designing our design D of S depends upon GP inverse of S and then of course G11, 0, G22 and so on. So one should know this GP of S very accurately in order to get its uh, inverse and the matching matching. Uh, matching poles and zeros over there. If there are slightest change in the position of the poles or there are model parameters changes because of which the poles are changing, then 
we will have to the, the, there is not an exact decoupling and then these interactive terms will up re, reappear and and it is not going to create give the solution for the single control loop way multiple single loop ways since it is highly sensitive to the model errors we should be bothered about using it under limited circumstances but let's see what is further available to us is a simplified decoupler design there we were designing four transfer functions d11 d21 d uh, d11 d2 d12 d21 d22 now there is a possibility that okay now i should be able to since there is there is a lot we just have g11 g22 kind of things to be considered so we should be able to design it with lesser number of transfer functions uh, lesser number of transfer matrices uh, transfer function matrix elements because that is finally is an add on thing that you are applying over here so if one some simple choice would be that the decoupler is having simple d12 and d21 terms in order to counteract the interactive terms g21 g2 g21 and g12 in the uh, process plan all right so let's take one example over here let's consider a g of s of this form which has um, which is again two input to two input to output case all right uh, so this is a transfer function between y1 and u1 this one is transfer function between y1 and u2 y2 and u1 and y y2 and u2 in this case now what happens if i consider um, converting rows to a common denominator in this case so this turns out to be giving me a nice diagonal form anyway and this part is something we have to take care of it in order to consider the decoupler the, the decoupler design in this case all right now the question here is of course we have a diagonal form but what do i do with this part and how do i design the decoupler let's take this over here now we have to take care of this so i take this I, I am considering this as n of s. If I consider the inverse of this, I get above of this form. Fair enough. As soon as I have this inverse available, we can consider the this itself as the d of s. All right. Now, even if it is a d of s, whether it is sitting before the process control block or the after control is to be considered very carefully what we did in this case is m this is matrix manipulation so one has to make, make sure that we are not considering the associative property of this all right so m of s n of s is not equal to n of s so m of s n of s we have written it in this form so now it is g of s times n of s inverse if i consider then i am getting a diagonal block which is 1 by s plus 7 s plus 14 0 0 1 by s plus 7 s plus 4 and this is a very simplified design right now this particular n of s inverse which is nothing but my my decoupler d of s is sitting after the process control block correct is that right the output I, I want this thing right so I have I, I, I'm writing this in terms of y of s sorry I'll write it on this side y of s is equal to g of s and inverse of s this is u star of s now so first multiplication is over here you can see here that whenever I am writing these uh, this particular form d of s is over here but this d of s is sitting before this gp of s so though we have designed the n inverse of s which was post multiplied but this d of s when we are designing which which is nothing but in that illustration as n inverse of s 
this sits before GP of S. Means this sits before the process control block. This is something we have to be careful when we are doing the matrix manipulations. If the matrix is post multiplied in the transfer function block, it is actually in the is appearing before the before before uh, the before in the signal flow. Uh, so in, in this way, this particular transfer function, so this particular illustration that I am considering, this is incorrect and one should consider D of S being connected before the process control block. That is all for this video. The contents are being taken from these two books, one can refer for more, more information. Thank you.